Hi folks, Joseph Kursky here with you to examine sea level rise in ArcGIS Online. Now ArcGIS Online is a software as a service platform that's running in a web browser. No software required. All you need is a web browser and an internet connection. Now this map that we're going to examine is linked to a wonderful lesson from my colleagues at ESRI Australia. Here are the learning outcomes. Students will be able to understand the global impact of potential sea level rise and how it affects different countries and different coastlines differently and then quantify the impacts of sea level rise and finally understand in more detail the correlation between climate change impacts sea level rise and poverty especially within Bangladesh so let's take a look at this if you click on this link inside this lesson you will see this map with a variety of different layers inside of it. And this is in ArcGIS Online. It's a seamless map of the world. As I pan to the west, you can see that eventually I get back to my starting point. And you can see here that according to the sea level increase, one meter, different coastlines are affected differently. So for example, if I go to bookmarks and look at the southern part of Vietnam, it's a lot different there. It's, it impacts a lot more area. Why? Because the elevation is lower. It's a lot closer to sea level, i.e. within one meter. And as I pan up the coast, I can see not only here, but in other places around the world, the coasts are impacted differently. So for example, if I went up to Victoria, Australia, you can see that certain parts of the coast are impacted differently than other parts of the coast. So that is the one meter sea level rise. But what about five meters? If we did that, if we selected that, we can see that if I toggle back and forth, as expected, more of the land is impacted. And so I, if I leave the five meter on and then I go back to the southern part of Vietnam, we've got a huge area here. How big of an area is it? Well, we've got a measure tool. For example, we can go over here and measure an area of square kilometers. So if we, if we just draw a box around here, approximating 55,000 square kilometers, a huge area that could be potentially impacted. Now, why is this? If we turn on something like World Hill Shade, we can see that these areas that are impacted are, are flat, right? They're close to coasts. And we could do things like t turn on population using this add data button up here we can turn on population layers we could add cities of the world there's a lot of things we can do here at our fingertips let's go over here to the elevation layer that i've added and you can see here from the legend the elevations there are all low which makes sense i also have a coarser elevation layer right here if i turn on that i can see that these are all low-lying areas according to this legend right here. Low areas, more impacted by sea level change. Let's take a look at the specific country of Bangladesh. So let's take a look at current levels. We'll zoom in there or we could use the bookmarks and zoom in right there as well. And so I can see that this is one of those areas just like southern Vietnam where it's low-lying and potentially impacted more by, in fact already is impacted, the storm surges are increasing in frequency and in duration. So I've got at my fingertips the three, two, one meter. And as I go from one meter, for example, two meters, three meters, I could use my measure tool at each step. I can see the severity of just a few meters impacts a huge amount of area. One of the things that the students do in this lesson is they estimate the percent of the whole country that would could potentially be underwater from this sea level change. Another layer at your fingertips here is the percentage of population living below the poverty line in Bangladesh. So looking at the potential sea level rise versus the percentage of population living below the poverty line and looking at the relationships and who is impacted potentially and who is not. Now as I indicated earlier, I have the ability to add different layers from ArcGIS Online, for example, from the Living Atlas of the World. If I use this Add button, and I added World Cities just now, now I've got a set of World Cities. Now all of these cities aren't created equal, correct? If I change the style so that I'm, for example, mapping on population, now I can see that the larger circles are larger cities. So now if we turn back on 
the sea level 5 meter rise. Let's take a look at some of these. So for example, how many of these cities are potentially impacted? Quite a few, depending on the coastline that you're examining. What about large cities? Numerous large cities. Let's go over to Asia. Tokyo, for example. We don't have to pan around like that. We can look at cities just by typing in their names. And we can examine different cities around the world. Fascinating to be able to examine all of these layers inside this one single environment called ArcGIS Online. Running on the web, as you can see here, all I'm doing is turning on and turning off layers. I'm using some tools. There's also, if you want to dig deeper, the analysis zone. Then you can do things like, give me all of the cities. Now, how many cities do we have, for example, in this particular data set? I'm going to turn on that table. 2,540 cities. How many cities are actually intersected by the five meter rise? Those are the kinds of things you can do in these analysis tools. And then of those cities, how many have at least one million people? One more thing I'd like to show you, and that is these layers on the left side here, these are all features. They're like the Lego bricks that go in, into making a building. So you can use them in different ways. You can use them in different maps or even in 3D scenes. So for example, in this 3D scene, I'm looking at the same two layers that we were looking at earlier, the one and the five meter rise. I can turn on and turn them off just like we did before, but now we've got this ability to look at these in the three-dimensional environment using this 3D scene viewer. So if, if we go to the place that we were looking at earlier over in Belgium, the Netherlands, etc., I can look at the amount of terrain in a different way with this 3D scene viewer. I can see the impact that sea level rise would have, for example, on river valleys. So you may think this is only near the coast, but it's not, right? It goes all the way up this river valley, for example. And I can also take different base maps and use those. So you can get into really close, tight detail here, looking at different communities along coasts. So this is inside the 3D scene viewer, and it is part of ArcGIS Online. We'll close by looking at the area in Bangladesh that we were looking at earlier. And once again, you can see the, the river valleys that would also be impacted. I've just changed the base map to the oceans base map because that would be very appropriate to look at. One of the things that you can observe is that the terrain of the ocean floor and also the continental shelf, so many of these places that are impacted most severely by storm surges and sea level rise are actually inside the continental shelf. In other words, the sea floor is actually quite shallow versus other places around the planet. So you can see the ocean's base map is a powerful thing to add while you're looking at uh, these different places around the world. So for example, we can look at a place like different islands around the world, for example, that could be impacted. like this series of islands in the Indian Ocean. So again, lots of power at your fingertips, lots of ways to increase media fluency, computer literacy, but also critical thinking and spatial thinking and temporal thinking over time as climate changes. Thanks.